Hey guys, my name is uh, Nick Blakiston, and as you can see from my t-shirt, which you might not see throughout the video, um, that's what I am, uh, if I had to identify as one thing. But that's just a little about me. Um, this video is about the Phoenix Suns and why I believe they are the favorite going into this upcoming NBA season. So, you got this big three, and all these guys can create shots for themselves. They're tough to cover. They typically have demanded double teams. Booker is a great passer. Um... KD is a great passer. You know, Beal, we haven't seen much of yet. Um, but we know he can score. Um, so he's going to be a threat out there. He's a three-point shooting threat. You know, when Book and KD are out there cooking, guys get good looks from three if they're out there with them. Um, then you got big man in the middle, you know, uh, Aiton and, um, you got a new coach Vogel who is coming in with a reputation of being a defensive minded coach of someone who has had success developing big men that have played with him before. And, uh, Let's see here. Um, you know, Vogel is uh, going to be a very different kind of coach than we had before. And, um, you know, I don't think the relationship with Monty and Aiton was great. Uh, Yet ever since that Dallas Mavericks game seven, um, it seemed like there were issues there that never got resolved. And we've moved on. Good luck to Mr. Williams in Detroit. We'll see what you can do with those guys out there. Um, you know, Aiton has shown us flashes of absolute brilliance at moments in his career. Um, times where it seemed like he was completely unstoppable near the rim, where any time he caught it from the free throw line or below, you just expected him to make it. And he was shooting a ridiculous percentage um, in the playoffs that year they went to the finals. Um, so, you know, we know he's got the tools. Uh, defensively, he hasn't been consistent, but he has at times shown us good things, um, solid things. Um, yeah, this is going to be a very different system than what we had with Chris Paul, where it was a lot of pick and roll. I don't envision much pick and roll with this team. I see a lot of isolation basketball because you've got three of the best isolation offensive players in the league. Um, and you've only got so many defenders. Uh, these guys are going to demand single coverage. It's going to be the only way to guard them because they're going to be able to put guys around them who can score. Um, so Aiton, when he's on the floor, this is one thing. He's not going to be on the floor all the time. They've gotten other guys that can shoot from outside, that they can put in with this unit. And if you have a big man in the middle, you can't leave him near the basket because he's just an automatic two points. So eight and I envision is just going to be standing on offensively, you know, not getting three second violations, but as close to the paint as he can be trying to get positions so these guys can just feed him and he can so his man's going to have to stay down low with him. Um, if they even have a man who can do that, which some teams don't have a lot of height. Uh, 
So, you know, and there's some guys that, you know, one-on-one he can take them uh, if he does catch it down low. So, you know, he's going to have a role to play, and that's going to be his kind of region of the floor is the near the basket. Everyone else is going to be a perimeter guy that you can't leave from outside. So they're going to have to play man coverage to try to guard the Suns. Um, But KD and Book, there's just not many guys who can guard those guys. And if you have them both, there's even fewer teams that have two guys who can guard one of those guys. And I don't even think the Nuggets um, really do, uh, even though they did win the series um, because of what Jokic was able to do for them. Um, I mean, Booker and KD went off, um, in some of those games and I mean, Booker had a historic performance, uh, in the playoffs. It was just Jokic was better. You know, Jokic was just a level above and what we were able to do defensively wasn't good enough. Uh, now we got a defensive minded coach who hopefully can use the tools that Aiton's got um, to maximize his abilities and cohesion, you know. The Suns are going to need to build cohesion, you know. It's going to probably take time uh, for them to really get used to each other's, the spots they like to catch the ball, things like that, and, uh, and to just develop cohesion, you know. There's very little continuity from last year's group other than Booker and KD, um, almost everyone else on the roster is new. I mean, you've got Damian Lee returning and uh, Aiton, of course. So back to Aiton. Um, yeah, he talks about he has no fans. And it's like he had an arena full of fans when he got four offensive rebounds on the first possession of that playoff game uh, towards the end there. Um, You know, the fans want to see him succeed. And if he succeeds, they will give him the support that he desires. But if he fails to meet what people are hoping he can fulfill, then he should expect that people won't be cheering him on too hard. Um, That's just how it goes. And, um, you know, he says he wants to change his image and all this. You know, you change it on the court, man. You work as hard as you can this summer. You talk to Vogel, you talk to the other coaches, the other players, what do you need to work on, what do you need to focus on, and you commit to it, man. And, uh, you know, you're only going to be in the league for a short period of time if, if you live to be a decent age. And uh, over the course of your life, you know, even if you play 15 years, you know, I'm 40, so I'm probably not got a great life expectation, but um, I could have finished an NBA career plus some by now if I had those tools um, in my tool belt, which I don't, even though I think I could get to be okay if I had the right coaches and put in the right effort. Uh, I don't know, man. You know, this guy, Eddie, he plays poker sometimes with us. And he's also a commentator for the Suns. And um, I thought before, like, maybe I should talk to this guy and be like, hey, you want to, like, help me get better at basketball? I'll, like, teach you how to play poker a little better, man. Because I got to say, he's not not the world's greatest player from my perspective. But, uh, I don't know, man. Haven't brought it up yet, you know, and I got a pretty busy life, man. Uh, you know, I'm working, working full time right now, and uh, I got, you know, these kids half the time, so I stay pretty busy. You know, I haven't been able to play as much poker lately, and um, 
I'm hoping to get some play in this weekend. You know, I'm uh, hoping to wear this shirt over there tomorrow because um, it's who I am, man. It's what I am. And um, I want people to know that about me, you know. Uh, you know, people, we have different relationships and uh, different context. And that's just me. And that's who I am and what I believe in. And, um, you know, I got my reasons for believing in it. And uh, I think I got some videos probably about that stuff on here somewhere. I got this blog I'm probably going to be putting back up. I just, I, I wanted to review it. I've just, I've been real busy with work and uh, these other projects. I started a new book, which is a futuristic novel of, you know, a couple generations after we got freedom, like what it would be like kind of thing. And problem is I'm having a hard time coming up with like a good plot because it's like all the problems are kind of solved. Like, you know, someone does something bad where they pretty much immediately know who it was and it, and just things get taken care of. And uh, people have security, people are fed, people have free time, leisure, you know, life's good. And uh, maybe it need to be some kind of romantic novel because, of course, you know, ways of the heart, that's always confusing shit. And uh, I don't know, man. Um Yeah, maybe I could do something like that, man. Um, maybe it'll be a romance novel, man. Because, uh... Because what else would there be, right? I mean, that would be the struggle, right? Would be... Um... The separation... From... The beloved, you know? And, uh... Of course, you know, that takes... Um, form in more than just romantic relationships, but um, all kind of beloved relationships where people care for each other. And, um, you know, it's tough to separate from people we care about because we want to know how they're doing. And it's tough to be separated from them because we just uh, want to see them. And, you know, it's a different kind of pure kind of struggle, man. It's uh, the struggle of the heart, man. So maybe that's kind of along the lines, so that just gives me another project to work on, um, <laughs> you know, life's a balance, man, we got the things, you know, we got to make money, man, we got to get our financial house in order, um, as individuals, because until we do that, we're not in a personal position to help anyone else. You know, government's going to fail this society, man. And I don't know when the final collapse will be, but I promise it's fucking coming, man. And people are going to need to lean on each other to survive, man. And there ain't going to be any room for people who don't gotta lean because some people they're gonna have to lean and uh, you know we got kids and we got you know the elderly we got the disabled and um, we're gonna have a real struggle because we're gonna have an oil crisis we're going to need to deal with on top of a fucking financial crisis. Probably other crises that been going on a while, man. So I guess that's all I got for tonight. Um, 
maybe I'll see you guys tomorrow.